Brother Foster, and he he comes near unto his father. The world does the same thing to us. How do you know? Because you know what? I have found out it's not those that love me. That are it, 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 sometimes it's, it's people that have this mind frame of getting close to enter an old military strategic uh, strategy where you get close to your enemy so you can learn everything about them to where you can use it against them in time of battle. You see, it's been those kind of people in my life that has drawn their self, their pretenders, and their fakes, and they come in, Brother Josh, and they get close to me, and I begin to take, and I begin to, to, to fall. I fell for it many times, y'all. I have, I have. It's not those that are in the world that hurts me the most. It's those that pretend to be something they're not, and draw close to me to take and to stab me in the back quicker than the man that, 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 that hates my guts. My God, the man that hates my guts and I know it, at least he's not fake. The one who pretends is the one who's the dangerous enemy. And that's what Jacob was. He got close, Brother Josh, to his father it's not, it's not. to take and to get what was not his to be blessed. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. You see, verse 27, look at this, my last point. And he came near. Isaac calls his son, he came near. And he kissed him. And he smelled him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment. And blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field, which the Lord hath blessed. Huh. Does he smell the world as the things of the world that give us pleasure? No. The Bible says what he smells. He said, I smell the field upon my son. I smell the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. What are you trying to say this morning, preacher? Well, see, Sister Foster, there's something that I found that's very important about this whole passage of Scripture. See, Isaac wanted Jacob to come near because he wanted to be sure that it was Esau instead of Jacob. When I see, when I came to the Father, I came to Him in not my scent, but I had to take and I had to change the scent of what I was to be able to get to the Father. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? You see, I couldn't go and present myself to the Father in my old life because my old life was not good enough for Him. Sister Foster, I couldn't go to my Father in, in, in the way that I used to be. So I had, I mean, yes, come to Him as you are. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm trying to say is, in order for Jacob to get the blessing, I, he had to take and change some things about what he was. He had to modify himself, so to speak. He had to change his clothes. What are you trying to tell us? The Bible says to take off the filthy garments of, 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 of the world and put on the garments of praise. The Bible takes and lets us see that we're to take the smell of this world. And how do we do that, preacher? Well, it got me to thinking about the book of Luke chapter 15. Brother Josh, Luke 15 tells us the story of the prodigal son. And the Bible says that the prodigal son worked the pig field. But when he came home, all the father did was put a robe on his back. All we got to do is take off this garment of this world and put on the garment of Jesus and it changes the way we smell. Brother Josh, I got to thinking about it and I, I thought about it when I was a little boy. Just a little boy. A wee little lad. I know what they say. I was just a little boy, Sister Bree. 
And, and, and I remember going to Florida to see my grandparents. And my cousin was about 10 years older than I was. Because my daddy waited until he was nearly an old man before he got ready to have kids. So it caused my aunt to have a big jump start on my daddy, so to speak. So all my cousins, I had a few cousins that was a lot older than me. And I have a cousin that's about 10, 12 years older than me, and I remember going to visit my mom and papa, Brother Josh, and he was, he was already a young man at the time, and he took and he, he, he come over to the house, and my mom and papa had a big uh, pine ticket behind the house. My cousin Sean had killed many deer back there in that, that set of woods behind the house. Well, one day he had come over and Mama had messed up and put his outfit in the washer and, and his hunting outfit. So he comes outside, Brother Josh, and he takes and he begins to run that outfit across the ground and across the dirt. And I started laughing. I said, what are you doing? And he said, just hang on. He takes and he goes over there and he breaks the cedar limb off. He begins to take cedar uh, pieces of them cedar leaves and crumble it on top of it. He began to wad it up and began to take and, and push it into them clothes. And I was laughing. I remember laughing, Brother Josh. And I'm like, you idiot. Momo just cleaned them and you're already getting them dirty. She's going to beat your hide if she sees you doing this. Momo! Look at Sean. Momo! That's what I wanted to do. He grabbed me and he said, hang on, Terrence. He said, hang on. He takes it. He out about that time. He flumps it off and tosses it on top of the cedar tree. And so what are you doing? He said, now I'm going to let the scent of the cedar take away the scent of what Momo did to my outfit. I said, okay, what are you doing that for? I was oblivious to hunting. I didn't know. He said, Terrence, let me tell you something. He said, if I would have went to the woods with what Momo put inside that outfit, I would have not got a deer to come near me in a five-mile radius. He said, I had to get rid of the clothes, the, the smell of the house off of my clothes in order for it to work. I said, well, why, why, why did you take and put all that cedar on it? Why did you run it in the dirt? Why did you do all that? He said, well, Terrence, I did that because I want my outfit to smell like the woods. I want to walk out there in the woods and I want to become one with them woods. I don't want to be a, a, a something that stands out in them woods. I want to be something that mingles in them woods. And boy, years later, I become a preacher and I got to thinking about that. I got to thinking about that, Brother Josh. I got to thinking and I got to wondering. I want to become one with him so much. That when the world looks at me, they don't see me. They see Jesus. They begin to see Jesus wrapped up all on the inside of me. They don't see nothing but Jesus. They see Jesus. I gotta hurry, y'all. Y'all appreciate me to death. So what about this field? You see, it ain't so much that the he needed this field. Well, I got to thinking about that. Jesus tells his disciples that there's a harvest that is truly ready, but his laborers are few. He said to pray, therefore, to the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth laborers into his harvest. The field. Jesus said that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 13 and verses 44, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field that which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. Why did he buy the field? He didn't buy the field because he wanted the field. He bought the field because he wanted the treasure in the field. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you. It ain't about the ground. It ain't about the field, so to speak. It's about what lies in the field. It's about what's in the world. That harvest. It's about what that man's after.
after that. He's after that pearl of the great price. You know what the Bible says about this treasure? It tells us. Means the field is a type of place in the Bible that represents the place where people is. Jesus said a man will sell everything he has to buy the field. Not because of the field, but because of what's in the field. And what's in the field is the treasure. What has the treasure got to do with us as His people? Exodus chapter 19 verses 5 and 6 tells us that if we will obey His voice indeed and keep His covenant, that He said, Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. He lets us know that we're that peculiar treasure. What are you trying to tell us? I'm trying to tell you that the Bible says that in the day that we was born, our mother, which is this the, the, the system of this world, the Bible says in Exodus, I mean in Ezekiel chapter 16 and about verse 5 that that mother took and all she did was give birth to that baby and throw it in a field. That's what the Bible says. It'd be like Bree right there, Josh, taking in your baby after she had it, picking that baby up and just tossing it in the field. <laughs> I'm just saying that's exactly what it was like in them days. The Bible, I mean, the history shows that women would take Sister Bree and actually dig a hole in an open field and go over there and squat over that hole and push that baby out, cut the umbilical cord, and turn around and cover it back up and walk away. That's what history says. And the Bible says that God come down and spoke to the prophet Ezekiel and blasted them people for that. And he told his people, he said, in the day of your nativity, on the day you were born, I saw what your mother did. I saw what they did. He said, but what I did is I walked by and I saw you lying there. He said, and when I saw you, I reached out and I picked you up in your blood. And I said, live. I said unto me, live. That's what the Bible says in Ezekiel 16. It's Jesus, let's us see. I purchased the field just for you. I did that for you. Not because I wanted the field. You know what the Bible says about this field, this earth? Everything that inhabits in the earth is mine. Heaven is my home and earth is my footstool. This is all His, folks. He owns it all. We may have come into this world, but this is His world. He knows exactly what He's doing. He knows exactly where He's going. But He put us into this earth to become a peculiar treasure, Sister Foster. And He said because we become this peculiar treasure that He took and He purchased us. How did He purchase us? Where does this show us in the Bible? The Bible says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, He said you have been bought with a price. He said that Jesus Christ purchased you. When did He purchase me? On the throne with His blood. He purchased you in His blood. That's how He purchased you and me. He purchased us through His blood. But see, what has this got to do with your message? Blessed because of another. Because you see, just like Jacob, so am I. Just as Jacob, so am I. See, Jacob could have never had Sister Bree this blessing. Uh -uh. Never could. Not that blessing from his father laying hands on him. He desired and wanted it. Go ahead, Sister Foster, if you don't mind. He desired and wanted it so mad that he would do whatever it took for him to obtain this blessing. So the Bible says that he went in the stead of another and he pretended that he was someone else. 
because of the older brother, he had access to getting the blessing. Do y'all realize that because of another by the name of Jesus Christ, I am able to receive God's blessing. Not because of anything that I've done or anything that anyone else has done, but only by what Jesus Christ has done for me upon the cross by His blood. And I heard a story just this past week that I just thought was beautiful and amazing. In 1973, there was the Japanese army had captured I think 30,000 American troops if I'm not mistaken. And Sister Foster, in the year of 1973, they made a march across the desert over there. Whatever, I don't remember exactly where it was at. But they would take, and they called it the Baton Death March. Some of you may have heard of it. I don't know. I never have, not until this past week. Brother Josh, they said that they would be marching them guys down through there, the American soldiers, and they said that they, they, they stripped them down to nothing. They wouldn't feed them. They wouldn't give them hardly no water. They wouldn't hardly feed them. And they made them walk across that desert, and that's why it's called the Baton Death March. Because they said that whenever a man would collapse from under the heat, that the Japanese soldiers would just walk over there and they'd just go to stabbing that man. Or they'd just beat him to death. And, and, and they said that a lot of them boys never made it across that, that walk. Well, they say that on a particular night, they made it to a destination and they were going to get in a ship on the river and, and they were going to move them downstream to another place. And there was a man that was involved in under that baton death march who in the year of 19, I believe 72, 1971, before he joined the military, he had become a born again Christian. He had took, he got born again. And the story says, I'm sorry, not the Bible, but the story says that when he got in the military, he got to hanging around the wrong crowd, got to hanging around the wrong people. And next thing you know, he said he done reverted back to his old life. And in this death march, this man said, the soldier gave testimony of his own words. He said that as he marched down through that wall, Sister Foster, he said he began to tell the Lord, Lord, if you would just help me to make it. He said, I'll give my life to you, but Lord, if I do die, he said, let me come to you. Let me make it to you. And he began to pray this prayer. Well, one day they took and, and, and he said that one night when they got him in that ship, I don't know if y'all ever heard of the, the alcohol sake or not, but that's what the Japanese would use to get drunk on. He said all them Japanese soldiers got drunk on that sake that night and he said that he managed to break himself loose from the bands that was holding him and he said that he swam out a little bitty hole. He said it took him almost all night long, Sister Bree, to get out of that hole. He said but he finally got out, hit that water, and he began to swim for his life. He said he swam as far as he could till he almost collapsed, made it to the shore, and ran it hid deep in the woods as far as he could. He said he woke up the next morning, snuck back around that ravine, Sister Candy, and said he looked and that boat was gone. They never knew they left him. <laughs> For two weeks, this American soldier stayed on this island, hoping and praying that maybe an American soldiers would come to this island and rescue him. Well, after a few weeks, I think three or four weeks, he ate nothing but bugs and drank rain water because he couldn't drink the water that was in the river. And he took and he drank rainwater, ate bugs, and tried to survive to the best of his ability. The man was about five foot four, five foot five. He said he got down to a little of nothing. He said that he was filthy, he was dirty, he was tired, not tired. He was hungry, he was just wore out. He said, but one night he heard some commotion going on in that island. He said that he 
he took off running thinking, uh, yes, somebody's coming to try to rescue me. Uh, he said, but he thought to himself, uh, wait a minute, what if it's just a Japanese army? So he snuck out through the edge of the woods. Sister Brady said he looked through the woods, through the trees. He said he looked up and he saw some of the beautifulest thing, most beautiful thing he's ever saw. And that was that American flag on the shoulder of a, one of them men. He said he took off running because he knew that his freedom was there at the shore. He knew that God had sent someone to help him. He said, but he was tired, dirty, and wore out. He was naked because they stripped him of his clothes. He said that he began to run out of them woods onto that beach. He began to scream, don't shoot, don't shoot. I'm an American American soldier. My serial number is this. I came from this unit. My captain is this man. He began to scream, don't shoot, don't shoot. He said all of a sudden them two soldiers threw their guns up and said, if you take another step, we will shoot. The American soldier looked and said, guys, I'm one of y'all. Japanese soldiers took the captive and I'm only alive because of God's grace. They said, no, no, no. And he said, he looked down, Candy, and he said he saw the dirt on him. He saw how short he was. He saw how little he was from the weight that he lost. And he thought, man, my, my own country don't know who I am. I don't look like him. For I look like a Japanese soldier pretending to be an American. And he said to them two soldiers, said, listen, man, we've got orders from our captain that if anybody comes near us, for us to shoot them dead on the spot unless they know the password. This man said he looked at them two soldiers and he just tears started coming down his face because he did not know what the password was. The soldier said, and he looked at him, two soldiers, Sister Marie, and said, Before you shoot me, let me make peace with my people. He said, and he fell down on his knees. And he said, he began to cry out to God. And them two soldiers looked at that man and said, Okay, you got 10 seconds to make it right. And after that, we're shooting you dead on the spot. He said he threw his hands up and said he began to tell God, Lord, thank you for taking and saving a wretch just like me. He said, I want to tell you thank you for saving me. And he said, Lord, I'm sorry for the man that I've become. I'm sorry that I've backslidden on you. I'm sorry that I've took and I've turned on you. He said, but Lord, I want to come to you. And they're fixing to take my life. And the soldiers, done, he done was about 15 seconds into it, Josh. They were so enamored by his prayer that they dropped their guns to listen to this soldier pray. And the soldier said, he said, Lord, I am trusting in your blood to get me to heaven. By the blood of Jesus, I'm going to make it to see you. He said he squinched his eyes and waited just play patiently for the uh, the, the, the guns to go off uh, and to feel the agony pain of the bullets hitting them uh, to open his eyes to see the two fat soldiers walk into him candy and said man you have said the password they said the password was the blood the blood was the password that you needed and you said it and they took and they began to hold that man and walk him back to the ship the man came back to the United States and gave his testimony and how did he make it brother Josh he made it by the blood so what does the goat's hair got to do with anything of this message you know what the goat's hair was used for <laughs> 
It was the covering of the tabernacle. They put it all around the walls of that tabernacle. They put it over the top of that tabernacle. What are you trying to tell us? How did Jacob make it to his father to get the blessing? He was covered inside the hair of a goat. Something had to die in order for him to get the blessing. Let me tell you something. 2,000 years ago, a lamb died that was led to the slaughter for us to receive the blessing. We didn't get this blessing by free choice. It was not just, just given to us without him going through something. A lamb died so we can be blessed. What more can we do than to praise Him? What more can we do than to worship Him? Blessed because of another. Two kids died. Two goats, not kids, two goats. To get Jacob his blessing. But one lamb died, Brother Josh to save the whole world, to give them a blessing. Ain't that amazing? One lamb died so we could have a blessing. So my prayer this morning is, let's not be a pretender. Let's not be a fake. Let's not, I mean, this includes me, doll. I'm not just talking to people. I'm talking to myself. I've been telling the Lord, Lord, don't let me just be a fake and a pretender. Someone that claims to have the blessings without really knowing what the blessings are. Let me walk in your ways. Let me walk in. I didn't come here this morning to beat nobody up across the brow. I didn't do none of that. No, that was not my heart. My heart this morning was to tell you that Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one who died for our sins. He's the one that we're blessed. Our older brother, just as Esau, was the one. Where was Esau at? He was working in the field while his brother was robbing his blessing. Do y'all believe and know that the field ain't never been stopped? Jesus, since he died, he's never stopped working. We may sit back on the edge of the field just like Jacob taking the blessings while he's out there working. He's doing what he's supposed to do, but we're on the outside, the inside of the house of the comfort we're robbing the blessings. You see what I'm saying? We're no different than Jacob. I ain't. Maybe you are. Maybe you've got your head up on. Let me come on and touch you after service. But but I don't. I ain't got it together. Oh, I'm just human. I'm just a I'm just an old rotten sinner. If I got what I deserve, I deserve hell with my back broke. That's exactly what I deserve. But because of Jesus' blood, he said to have worth heaven. Because of the blood of Jesus and what he did for me. Because of Jesus. So I'm going to ask you this morning. Trust in that blood. Who do I trust in it for? Well, if you can't trust in it for yourself, trust in it for your kids. Trust in it for those that we love, Josh. Trust in it for those that we know to be who he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand our feet. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God. Lord, I come to you this morning. God, and I thank you for what you did on Calvary. Lord, I thank you for purchasing me. I thank you for that cross. God, I thank you for taking, Lord, and saving a wretch like me. God, I thank you for teaching me, Lord, of your blood, teaching me of your will, teaching me of your ways. God, I thank you for that. God, this morning, Lord, I come to you, Lord. I with everything in my heart, in my soul, God. Lord, I would pray, God, that this word would just go forth, Lord. God, into the hearts, Lord. The people, Lord, that just take root, Lord. God, let it take root of my own heart and my own life, God, to realize what you've blessed me with, Lord. What you've given me, Lord. God, I would pray, Lord, this morning, God, that you would take, Lord, 
Let this message go by the way of the internet, Lord, and save the lost. God, save, Lord, save. Oh, Jesus, save, Lord, save. God, save someone's heart, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just take, Lord, and you would just renew, Lord, let we've got the heart of someone, Lord. God, there may be, Lord, love of God, like this man, Lord, love of God, he took, Lord, he may have been saved, Lord, but he took, he turned for me. God, but you had a way of bringing them back, Lord, so I pray, God, that someone, Lord, that may be lost, Lord, that may be backslid, Lord, God, that may be, Lord, have a cut where they just need something for you to touch their lives, touch their hearts. God, we love you. God, we love you this morning, Lord. God, I thank you for everything you've done. Lord, I pray, Lord, that those that was here this morning, God, that you would let us leave, sir. That you would let us leave encouraged. That you would let us leave here looking important to you, knowing how good you are in our hearts and our lives. Father God, we'll be careful Lord, to give you the glory and the praise of God. For it's in your name. Amen.